Support provided by the Glick Fund, a CICF fund focused on inspiring philanthropy. Additional support provided by the Crystal DeHaan Family Foundation in honor of the children and families of Crystal House. We are here at the IU School of Medicine to meet microbiologist Ruben Sandoval, who just happens to be taking aspects of microbiology and creating art. Creative and innovative? You better believe it. Let's go in and meet him. Follow me. Well, I'm Ruben Sandoval, and I've been working at IU School of Medicine for about 21 years. My basic area of research is heavily dependent on microscopy. That's looking at images on the microscope to help solve questions. It's essential that you have a way to distinguish different compartments within the cell and what they're doing in relation to one another. As you can see, there's all kinds of multicolors that you can use because a lot of the research that I do, you're looking at multiple processes happening at the same time. I originally started doing this tessellation formulations because I wanted a, a seamless desktop on my computer, so I just kind of started playing around with that. So then I thought about just making mirror images and flipping the images over. They just perfectly match all the way across. There's some repetitive nature to it. And it was just done on a, on a whim, trying to get some nice, you know, background on my desktop, on my computer. And that's what kind yeah, of started really it all. happy accident. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> happy accident. A lot of the people here on the division, because they're researchers and they use this technique all the time for their own studies, when they saw the images that I was generating, they were just, you know, they kept telling me, you gotta do something with them. So I, I, I guess after that, I started to work more and more on, on generating more of these images. What I find fascinating too, I don't know about you, but from an artistic point of view, which is, you know, I'm always preaching balance. And what is so awesome, you've got these nuclei that are all around and that red, you know, it brings my eye to here, but then it balances here, which is just crazy. Like it's indirect, but you know, yeah. it's weird how that occurred when you tessellated the image. It, it yeah. just all balances. And, and there's actually, you know, when I do this, I go through a lot of iterations and try to pick the one that, like yeah. for, for example, for this, I wanted to get something that maybe brought out a couple of different features like this looks, to me, looks a little bit like a frog. And then oh, you, yeah. Then yeah. you, then you have, that. then you have this. Yeah, these are eyeballs. Yeah, <laughs> and it looks like a, maybe a yeah, smile. It's, yeah, it's mouth maybe right here. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'm always looking for things like that when I when I look at this. Tr you know, when I finally create an image, I try to look to see how many mm -hmm. different uh, visually striking features that I can get into one. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's you take kind of balancing your science eye with your, uh, your artistic balance eye of like, okay, what's going to make an interesting mm -hmm. picture out of it? Which is funny to switch gears between like, you know, like when you're going into like, you understand the science of what you're looking at, but then to actually also pull back and be like, wait a minute, the image that I'm trying to make beautiful has to look good when I replicate it. I think I was kind of born into doing this just because when I learn things, I'm always more, more of, a, of a visual learner. You start playing around with the images and you start noticing things that maybe you didn't notice when you're wearing your scientist hat or when you've got your research hat on and you're, you're examining things. You can kind of see how things kind of tie in together and how important it is to become more aware of the importance of both the arts and the sciences. And, you know, maybe they're not that different. Maybe there is a stronger connection that people would normally think. Wow, what Ruben is doing using a microscope is fascinating. For this project, we are in luck since Ruben gave us some images we can use. In fact, head to outrageouswithnate.com and you can download these too. I've decided to print this one off. I'm going to be cutting the image down and replicating or tessellating a small section. Let's take a look at what you are going to need. First, an image to work from and a paper to create on. I'm using 60 pound drawing paper. Second, a ruler and a pencil. Third, I have some simple stencils and a compass, which I picked up for about four bucks. Fourth, color pencils, which is what I will be working with. All right, let's get sketching. First thing I would do is use the ruler to divide your paper out, probably into quarters or even further. Next, I'm sketching out only one quarter of the design 
This will make it easier when I actually just have to replicate by turning or flipping to the next section. Before starting with the color pencils, you might practice on an extra piece of paper just to see if you like pushing harder or softer or how many layers of color you actually want. This will really determine how hard you press with each color pencil. All right, I'm gonna pause for now, but you probably are noticing how long this is actually taking me. Color penciling when done well and in layers takes some time. And remember, even though you're tessellating the image, you don't have to make it look exactly the same. When we pull back like in Ruben's work, everything starts to blend together, which looks really cool. Take your time on this one. You guys keep working, and I'm gonna keep working as well. Remember, be creative, be innovative, and be outrageous.